What's up, guys? Welcome back. We've got an exciting episode today. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I want to open up with this question. What does science tell us? Hey, guys, and welcome to another exciting episode of Your Life, God's Word. Thanks for joining this time of relevant conversation and scriptural application where we apply God's Word to the most important areas of life, God, family, and community. We pray this broadcast inspires, encourages, challenges, and blesses you in every way. So without further ado, let's dive right in to this week's episode. All right, so we are going to dive right into this here. Don't forget podcast at breadbreakers.com. That is podcast at breadbreakers.com if you have any questions or comments, things of that nature, and we will get to those during the podcast, possibly even do a whole episode just depending on what the question might be. So a lot of the um, a lot of the talk today, and this has been going around for a little while now. A lot of the um, um, what they call the new atheists, which I'm not sure how new they are anymore, um, but the guys like Richard Dawkins and um, back when Christopher Hitchens was still alive, these folks they'll, they'll they'll say this phrase, right? They'll say a phrase like, "Well, science tells us," right, and then fill in the blank with whatever it is that they. Uh, that they gather from the scientific evidence. Um, the problem is this, okay? They don't, by, by doing that, they are actually defaming what science is. What do I mean by that? Well, I think the best, um, the best way to go about it is to just look at some definitions of science, okay? What is Science. So if you just go to Google, type in definition of science, you'll find this. The intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. Okay? Then you go to dictionary.com. You look up science, and you'll get a few different definitions here. A branch of knowledge or study dealing with a body of facts or truths systematically arranged and showing the operation of general laws. Uh, definition two, systematic knowledge of the physical or material world gained through observation and experimentation. Uh, any of the branches of natural or physical science, that's definition three. Uh, definition four, systematized knowledge in general. Five, knowledge as of facts or principles, knowledge gained by systematic study. And finally, uh, a particular branch of of knowledge. Uh, so science is is knowledge, knowing something, having some facts, having some data, right? Um, then you'll see in several of these definitions, they talk about um, experimentation, observation, seeing something, experimenting with it, um, and that's called the scientific method. So if you look up the scientific method, what is that? It's a method of procedure that has characterized natural sciences since the 17th century, consisting in, here we go, systematic observation, measurement, and experiment, and the formulation, testing, and modification of hypotheses. Okay? In other words, you have a specific hypothesis, or maybe you don't. You're just experimenting in general. You have no clue where, where it's going to turn. Okay? But you have some kind of hypothesis, something you think something you maybe believe, is, it, this is the way something works, right? Then what do you do? You observe, you measure, you do experiments, right? And then what do you do? You test that hypothesis, and you modify it based on how the data goes, right? If I, if I hypothesize that when I drop this bottle of water, it is going to float upward, then I can do some experiments, right? I can drop it. I can go to... Um, a higher elevation and drop it. I can uh, wait till the wind is blowing really hard and drop it. I can you see what I'm saying that that's the testing, the experiment, the, the the measurement, the observing, right? And then hopefully, as I see that consistently it does not fall upward, I would come to the hypo I would come to change my hypothesis and say, you know what? I actually think when I drop it, it's going to go 
down. Now, you can get deeper and deeper and find out why that is and, and, and discover gravity and all these different things and, and even mathematical formula to, to uh, figure out how fast it's going to fall, right? What time is it going to be when it hits the ground? All these things that I used to be able to do with, uh, with one of those real fancy calculators when I was taking calculus way back in the day in school and have not used since um, because I'm not a scientist. So <clears throat> that's basically what science is, right? So, so when somebody says something to the effect of, well, science tells us, science doesn't tell us that. Science is a method of learning. It's gathering knowledge. It's hypotheses, testing, right, and then modification of that hypothesis. Um, so, for instance, science um, can give us the data, the truth, right, that if you hold somebody underwater for a certain length of time, they are going to die. They are going to expire, right? You can, not that we should test that, right? <laughs> but, right, what is scientifically, pure science, just, just data gathering knowledge, you could know, oh, okay, right? So, but science doesn't tell us whether we should hold people underwater. And this is where, this is where a lot of this stuff goes. A lot of the, the problem with the science tells us crowd is that when they say tells us, they start getting into moral argumentation. They start getting into um, realms of philosophy, right? They start getting into realms of theology, right? Science tells us there's no God. Well, that's, that's no, science isn't going to tell you that. Um, you are saying that based on what you observe and what you see. And many times, right, in the case of drowning somebody in water, right, it's easy now, we shouldn't be doing that. Um, or is it, right? Um, because if you're a pure naturalist, right, how do you, how do you, how do you determine that it's, we shouldn't drown people, right? If there's no, well, we make laws, it's wrong to drown. Who said it's wrong? Well, I think it's wrong. Okay, so we go by what you say. Well, society says. What if society starts saying it's, it's okay to? Well, I mean, at one point, there were certain societies that it was okay to burn people at the stake. Is that okay? It was okay back then, but it's not now because we decided no. See, this is the kind of stuff you get into, and it's not what I want to talk about as much today. But this this is the this is the slippery slope of the science says, right? It, it's it it really gets more into scientism, where people start to follow science almost like a religious doctrine, um, a a religious dogma. It's you know science. Everything has to be derived by science, and science is one way to know things. The scientific method, right? But you can't, how do you know if you love someone, right? How do you know they love you? How do you know if you can trust someone? How do you, how do you explain something like beauty, right? How, how do you, how do you explain something like, you know, like mathematical laws, right? There's a lot of things that, that science, that methodology, which is fantastic and, and can get a lot of answers for a lot of things, um, it, it starts to break down, right? Science can't really tell you if something is moral, Right. Um, that now you have to get into, right, different types of knowledge. And so science is fantastic. F science is, is great, used in its proper place. The scriptures actually tell us, um, in First Cor in First Corinthians, sorry, uh, different epistle from Paul. First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. I'm reading from the NLT here. Uh, Paul says, Timothy, guard what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. So, there's an element of knowledge and learning. In the King James Version, it actually translates that word from knowledge. It actually says science. Um... Because, again, science is really, it's knowledge. It's a way of getting knowledge. And, and people's faith is shaken often by, quote-unquote, scientific discovery or things that science, quote-unquote, tells us 
um, that that it, it is not true or it's someone's opinion of, of the data, right? Because the data has to be translated. Um, you know, what, okay, so here, here's the fact of the matter. What does that mean, right? So let's take our um, example of the dropping the water bottle, right? With the, with the calculations, the things that I, I mentioned, I mean, you, you can determine, yes, it falls down, but why does it fall down? Well, I, I could say, well, I believe up there somewhere there is a wind god that is constantly blowing down, and so their breath causes things to, to fall back down to the earth. Okay, right? Um, and then you could say, no, I think there's, a, there, there's an invisible uh, force. Let's call, it, let's call it gravity, right, that, that plays on, on an object, you know, with, based on their mass. And, you know, I mean, again, right, one, one I'll say, belief system, one way to translate that, data, that truth, that knowledge, and another way to translate it. So, again, scientists say things. Um, science really doesn't say much, <laughs> okay? Um, and the, one, the thing I really want to get into right now is, is more along the lines of, of what's going on in our culture right now, today. If you've been paying any attention to anything going on um, in the United States right now, uh, we are in the middle of a presidential year, right? Which means, you know, the 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 the, the pit of hell is is breaking open and coming unchained, and that's been true in pretty much every uh, election year. But in this one, especially, I mean, people are rioting in the streets and all these different um, cities and and uh, killing literally literally killing people and and then people are getting prosecuted for defending their lives and defending their uh, their their businesses i mean you know somebody is beating you up and you you know you you shoot them to defend yourself and then you get prosecuted right this kind of stuff is happening it's very crazy um but one thing that um the especially the the, the democrats love to do is is to do this thing like Oh well, you know they they don't they're they're the part they're the party against science. You know we believe in science. We we believe in we are the we are the party of science, and so I want to I want to look at that because I think that what can what can happen is in the scriptures, right? You, people can get caught up in this in this uh, f- stuff that is falsely called science. And their faith can be shaken. They can waver away from the truth. And I'll explain that in just a second here. But let's first examine this we are the party of science idea. Because, I mean, if you, if you like knowledge, if you, know, if you are uh, someone who believes truth, I mean, you should be for the party of science and truth and knowledge, right? But let's, let's examine whether that is even whether that is even true. Um, first, let's look at Nancy Pelosi. She is a very, very popular uh, member of the Democratic Party. She very much embodies um, much of what they believe and, and, and such. So let's look at something that she recently said as it, as it relates to being the party of science. It's Mother Earth is angry. She's telling us, whether she's telling us with hurricanes on the Gulf Coast, fires in the West, whatever it is, that the climate crisis is real and has an impact. Now, I'm not sure when Pelosi became a Wiccan, but Mother Earth is telling us what exactly? Um, there's, uh, There's hurricanes, and so Mother Earth is telling us that she's upset because of climate change. Um, ex- exactly how is that scientific? I'm trying to figure that one out. Maybe you can help me. Oh, that's scientific. But these are the same people that will rail against Christians. I mean, absolutely have total disdain. Um, total disdain for Christians. Oh, they don't believe in science. They're a bunch of you know, hillbilly hicks, and, um, I mean, it's, it's just, it, it's crazy to, to, to see and hear this. Now, you're probably aware of the, uh, the issues that California 
is having right now with you know wildfires and, and this kind of stuff going on. And certainly, um, our prayers are with the people there in California. There are definitely you know it, it, this is a serious issue, and, and it's like why do we constantly have these wildfires? Well, um, guys like Gavin Newsom, right, uh, the governor, the Democratic governor of of California. Gavin Newsom wants to blame, you know, the 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 wildfires on climate change. Where which where is the direct scientific link between climate change and and, and these wildfires? I believe the statistic it, it, for California it was like a three degree differential over a hundred years. That is causing wildfires? Huh? Whereas Gavin Newsom himself admitted to, admitted to, uh, poorly um, taking care of the forests there in California. Very poor forest management. Um, and w- w- what, are the, w- w- what does that mean? Well, they're not, they're not really allowed to do much in the way of controlled burns, which, which helps to kill and destroy the... Um, the old trees and stuff that are e- going to easily catch fire. Also, um, they let this, they let forests, they let forestation, I mean, bump right up against neighborhoods, right up against uh, places where there's population, right? Instead of kind of cutting that back, giving a wider buffer. Those are just a couple of examples. You can go research it yourself. But he admitted to this. Now, what, what makes more sense? A three degree change. Over a hundred years, you know, climate change. Or maybe we should get rid of all the dead, dry, nasty trees and not let all that stuff bump right up against population areas. Hmm. Which one of those has a more immediate impact on the wildfires? I just can't put my finger on it. See, again... Are we following the science, the knowledge, the, or do we just have a political agenda and we want to point our finger at people and say, they're against science? And, and, uh, again, th- this happens across the board where Christians are constantly derogated, constantly you know, torn down co- because we don't believe in science. Of course we do. Um, the problem is when people take science and then manipulate the data or misuse or misinterpret the data, you can really get into some bad uh, bad decisions, bad policies, even immoral, unrighteous behavior. Uh, so l- let's let's talk a little bit about that right now. So we we know, um, apparently, you know, Democrats are the, are the party of Mother Earth now, um, and you know we can't we we can't do practical, logical, scientific things to protect people from dying or losing everything in a wildfire because oh my goodness, no, we can't possibly you know cut back some trees or do some controlled burns, which is actually healthier for the forest itself. Oh no 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 no, we can't do that. We got to blame it on climate change. Right, and he recently came out, and they want to ban, you know, these. I think he said combustible engines, which basically means all cars, um, by twenty thirty five. In fifteen years, all cars off the road completely. You're gonna ban them? What kind of nonsense is that? No, we we have to do that, not controlled burns. But it, this gets even worse. Okay, of course, everyone knows that. Um, I mean, I, I guess everyone knows, maybe not that Biden is is highly, totally pro-abortion and even changed his stance on whether abortion should be funded by the state. So he's not only cool with um, the, the murder of innocent babies. Biden is 100% for the murder of innocent babies, but he also wants you as a taxpayer to pay for other people to kill their babies. So I am, I am absolutely against that. It is a ghastly stain on America and frankly, if I were God, there would be some judgment coming, bro. Or the millions of babies ripped apart in the womb, treated like trash, 
right? Trump, I think, just passed uh, maybe an executive order or something basically saying that if an abortion goes awry, if it doesn't work and the, and the baby is alive, it is now mandated that that baby must be given care medical care. Why does he have to do that? Because it is normal practice in Planned Parenthood and other abortion clinics. It is normal practice that if a if an abortion does not work and you have this baby here that's struggling to survive to allow the baby just to die, just to just to, you know, we, we tried to abort it, didn't really work. Just leave it in that pan over there in the back room, cold and trying to struggle for its life and let it terminate. That's what Biden is for. I'm against that. But Biden not only wants to allow that to happen, he wants me to pay for it. That's what taxpayer funding, that's what government funds to Planned Parenthood means. Planned Parenthood, they are abortion centers. That's where they make their money, right? Um, Biden is pro that. I'm against that. The party of science is okay with murdering babies. Now, scientifically, medically, these it, it, these babies are viable. It's getting pushed back further and further and further and further. I mean, you're talking, you know, 20 weeks, 22 weeks, 24 weeks, where, whereas these people are okay with killing these babies, okay? So science, quote-unquote, tells us, <laughs> right, these babies can survive. They are a, they're a person. Well, these babies, these... Well, let's let's see what science actually tells us. These things, right, can survive and become a person, right? Grow up, be an adult. Well, they are a person, but science doesn't necessarily, quote unquote, tell us that, right? But I think science does. I think when you say left alone, without somebody intervening and killing it, left alone, this baby will survive, right? I would think that that scientifically that means it's a person it may not be uh as, as you know, an adult it may not be as aware as you and me but but a, but a three-year-old isn't quite as aware as a 40-year-old probably right uh, you know may well i mean i hate i hate to say it but come on now there's probably some six-year-olds that are more aware than biden is currently okay he's obviously in in some kind of mental decline. So when people get there, think about this, right? In the early stages and the later stages, this is where this starts to affect people. When people are in later stages into decline, into Alzheimer's or different things, right? Dementia. Well, they're not as aware. They're not, they're not as sentient, right? Is it okay to kill them now? Well, what does science say? Science doesn't. That's a moral judgment. And I would say Biden's morals are from the pit of hell. Um, and, and you know, Take it for what it's worth. I guess if you like murdering babies, you're okay with that. Whatever. Um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right? She died. RBG, right? She died. And of course, everybody is screaming, oh my goodness, we can't fill that seat, that, that Supreme Court justice seat, even though that's exactly what the Constitution tells the president to, to do. And, and the Senate is supposed to, right, have confirmation hearings. I mean, this is totally what's supposed to happen. <laughs> right? But why are people screaming that we shouldn't fill it? Well, they're concerned that Trump will fill it with someone who recognizes Roe v. Wade for what it is, a terrible piece of legislation. I mean, first, it's completely immoral. It's evil. It's wicked. It was birthed in the mind of hell, okay? But beyond that, it's also cruddy legislation, saying that there's a there's a constitutional right somewhere in the constitution we're we're allowed to kill babies <laughs> where is that in the constitution the problem is of course at the time the um the supreme court was extremely left leaning social justice justice type of type of court they did not they legislated from the bench that means they basically made laws from the Supreme Court, which is not how our country is supposed to supposed to work. Laws are supposed to be made in Congress. The Supreme Court is only supposed to be looking at it and saying, does this line up with what the original founders wanted? A little history lesson for you if you didn't know that. But, right, why all the screaming? Because they're so concerned that Roe v. Wade is going to get overturned. What's Roe v. Wade? It's what legalizes abortion. So all the people screaming about we should not fill this seat, they are. what are they really screaming? 
They are screaming, we should be able to continue to murder hundreds of thousands of babies on a regular basis. Millions of them over the years. We, so anybody who says we should, they are, they are screaming and yelling, okay? They're screaming and yelling to be able to protect their right to murder babies. But, but, but we're the party of science? Science! Right? Oh, no, it's not a baby. How is it? Is, scientifically, it absolutely is. What do, you, what do you mean? No, it's just a glob of cells. A glob of cells? Have you ever seen an ultrasound? A glob of cells has a heartbeat, has brain waves. A glob of cells you can literally see, right? 16 weeks, 17, 18 weeks, you can see the formation. It's not a glob of cells if you've looked at an actual ultrasound. It's not a glob of cells. That's not. That's completely unscientific. That's some of the most unscientific garbage you can possibly say. But they're the party of science. No, they're the party of murdering babies. And the science can just take a hike. But they're the party of science, right? The science that says men who feel like they are women are actually women, right? Huh? Yeah. Did you know that? Right? The whole quote-unquote transgender issue, which, again, Biden is, is completely for the transgender issue. Uh, he actually said something to the effect that that's the great social issue of our day. Um, I don't think so, right? What is transgender? That is a woman who thinks she's a man. We should all say she's a man. I have a whole um, a segment on this in one of my earlier podcasts. I can't remember which one offhand, but you can go, you know, you can go look at it. But, you know, th- th- Medical doctors have come out and identified this as similar to anorexia, where your mental belief is different than the physical reality, right? Biology says when a baby is born, I mean, even before born, right? You can look in the, in the womb <clears throat> where the child is alive and a child and, and terminating that pregnancy is murder, um, we have we can look in the womb and see right that the 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 child is going to be a male or a female how do we know this science bio it's a it's a weird thing called biology like just came out it's really cool really new really hip really fresh you should check it out it's called biology <laughs> but they're the party of science that doesn't recognize the plain and simple truths of biology i mean Seriously? But I thought they were the party of science. Well, only when it suits their purpose. Only when they can take, quote-unquote, science and manipulate it and abuse it and use it for their political ends. Right? And again, right? We should... What should, what should we be doing? Let's go back. Let's go back to these two, these two topics. Right? Abortion. It's a real issue. What should we be doing? Right? I did some research on my, on my own, and I think it was... At the time I did the research, the, the stuff that I found, it was like if you if you added up the reasons such as the mother's life is in danger, right, or things like that, it, it was like 1% of abortions or maybe 3% of abortions, I think it was only 1%, um, are because of that. And the vast majority, right, 95 to 98 or more percent was elective. It was an inconvenient time. People don't have the money right now to, you know, didn't want another child. It was a mistake, right? This kind of stuff. And I, I, I'm, like, I'm looking at the data, going, well, how, how is it that people can say, you know, we, are you rape and incest and mother's mother's life on the line, and, and then that's not even the bulk of abortions. It's just inconvenient. It's an inconvenience. What can we do? I think society can come together and, and do better at things like adoption, right? We can do better. I, I'd rather take the money that was going to go to Planned Parenthood and, and use that money to, to, um, to build um, better adoption facilities, you know, or, or have a system of, of orphanages that don't create a bunch of criminals 
and homeless people, right? And I'm not saying orphan all orphanages do that. I'm just saying that that would be my well. What's the worry with that? The worry would be that these folks, you know, they just kind of get older, get booted out, and then there's no right. So again, there's lots of there's. Let's sit down and chat about it. But I, I think killing our babies should be off the table. Let's figure out what to do. And and again, if you're in that boat, right? Maybe you're you had an abortion. Maybe you were a a um, you know, a husband or a boyfriend, and you pushed an abortion, and now you know you're you're feeling guilty. You're feeling, um, you know, condemned. You're the blood of Jesus covers all. Okay, the the blood of Jesus does not say, well, I can cover you and I can forgive you and I can I can restore you unless you had an abortion. That that's not the Jesus I serve. You need to start serving the right one. Um, and the church should recognize this as a real thing and should love people and forgive people and help people through. It's a, it's a tra- very traumatic thing for a woman to have an abortion most of the time. You know, unless you're just crazy, shout my abortion. Yeah, I had three of them. That's insanity. And there are people kind of doing that. But personally, I think it's a reaction to the guilt. Instead of instead of being guilty and, and confessing and repenting, they, they push it like, no, we, this, we should be proud of this. I, I personally think that. You know, it's just anecdotal. That's not scientific, but it's it's anecdotal. But that that the the church, the cross is there for you, and I believe society can come together and use our funds in a better way to promote um, promote life, promote life. On the other side, right when people are are feeling these feelings, like you're clearly a male, you're clearly a boy, you're clear, but you feel like you might. I mean. The church needs to be there for prayer, for help, um, for love, because you are a man, right? You you have the the chromosomes, right, to prove it. Biology. Um, again, I think these are things that science is very clear, right? The science is very clear. Boy, girl, um, we need to not allow liars and charlatans and politicians and some would argue that those are all synonymous i think i think there's good politicians out there that don't have to be liars and charlatans but again a lot of them just seem to be um but we need to we need to as a church rise up and be people of knowledge and truth and stand for those things god's knowledge and god's truth and when people are telling us mother earth is 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 mad, which, I mean, that's, you know, that's Wiccan witchcraft. I mean, Mother Earth, what? Um, When people are telling us that a a baby in the womb is not really a baby, you know, um, no. When people tell us that men, just because they feel like it, are actually women, or, and vice versa, no. Um, let me, let me get on one last thing here. And this is what, this is what it boils down to. a, A lot of it does. Um, I will actually, I'm just going to, I'm going to let, I'm going to let the esteemed mayor de Blasio, right? He's the democratic mayor of New York. I'm going to let him say this in his own words. And so you can hear it directly from him. And then I will, um, I'll, I'll comment on it a little bit. Everyone has been instructed that if they see worship services going, uh, services going on, uh, they will go, uh, to the officials of that congregation. They'll inform them they need to stop the services and disperse. If that does not happen, they will take additional action up to the point of uh, fines and potentially uh, closing the building permanently. Well, you heard it from his straight from his mouth, right? First, everyone has been instructed to inform on their neighbors. I have instructed all of my comrades to look for these worship services and report on them. Really? I don't know what kind of accent that was. That was pathetic. But anyway, <clears throat> you get the point, right? First, people are reporting the when, when worship services are being held. And then he threatens if they don't comply with his orders, they will be fined and possibly their building will be closed permanently. Mayor de Blasio, Democrat, New York. Um, wow. Uh, that's pretty heavy handed. Now, why is, why is this? Now, the excuse, of course, is COVID. Of course, we know a lot of these folks hate 
churches hate what they stand for, you know, can't stand the Bible, God, real Christianity. Um, but, you know, well, well let's explain that, right? Because, again, scripturally, m- most of their platform is against Scripture, right? They are, you know, if they're pro-abortion, well, I mean, Scripture clearly is against murder, okay? If they're, if they don't believe in biology, I mean, the Bible clearly, you know, man, woman, <laughs> right? Um, there and, and other things uh, throughout the Scriptures that they're, literally, if you go to their website, the things they say they're for, God says I'm against. So, of course, they would be against if I can use the term orthodox Christianity, but when I say orthodox, I mean people that actually believe the Bible. Um, so, wow, wow, well, why is this? Well, because of the deadly, the extremely deadly um, coronavirus, which has, you know, bodies piled up in the in the streets. You remember, right? You remember when it first was happening, all the, all the, um, all the dooms- doomsday prophecies, the doom and gloom coming from the media, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, first it was, I think, millions and then hundreds of thousands, um, and, you know, and they've, they've constantly been, you know, tapering it down, down, down because they, they're wrong at every single turn. But it, it's because of the coronavirus, right? Well, we're just trying to keep people safe. Well, let's look at the science of, uh, of the coronavirus. Let's look at some actual science, right? Some actual data. If, if you look at sites like the CDC, right? You can go to cdc.gov. Um, also, uh, Johns Hopkins. Okay, you probably heard of Johns Hopkins. They are a uh, you know very uh, reputable uh, university in medicine um, or medical center. They you know they they also have statistics and stuff on um, on COVID and. What do we what do we what do we find there? Well, first of all, the world death rate, okay, deaths, right, compared to confirmed cases, so you confirmed cases of coronavirus versus the deaths. Worldwide, that percentage is 3.05% as of the time that I'm doing this podcast. 3.05. The US is 2.91. That means let in the US, less than 3%, less than 3% of the people who get coronavirus, okay, less than 3% actually die. Now, every death is that, you know, it's a tragedy, right? These are people, they have lives, they have families, they have, you know, hopes, dreams, aspirations, right? All of this stuff. So it's not minimizing any one death, but it is not the doom and gloom, you know, doomsday, build a bunker and don't come out, you know, until we tell you after the election, Uh, (laughs) right? We know a lot of this stuff is about that junk, but let's look at, let's look at something else in the United States. Okay. The United States total, uh, total deaths, right? So this is, this is total for, um, because of coronavirus. Now it depends on, you know, what stat you're looking at. Um, Johns Hopkins says at this, at this point in time, about 203,000 deaths. And let's see here. The, uh, the CDC says about 201. So, you know, it's off a little bit, but it's probably just timing based on, um, when, how, how recent. So this is from the CDC says updated September 24th. Okay. So, um, you know, again, off a couple thousand, but you can see that that's clearly very much in line. But what does that translate into, right? I said less than 3%, but when we start looking at a breakdown by age, right, we find that 80% of the deaths are those 65 and older. 80%, 80%, right? And if you if you look at people that are 45 and younger, or or under 45, maybe 44 and under, right? It's 3, 3% of the, po- of the people who die, okay? from COVID, 3% of them are under 45. So scientifically, let's say, is there a is there a area of our population maybe that's more at risk? Hmm. Right? So maybe our policies should be more about protecting the people that are at risk. Right? Of course, the, 
the Democratic mayor, not mayor, he's the governor of New York, Cuomo, right? Mayor Cuomo um, did not protect the oldest people in the population. He actually sent people back into nursing homes where they, they were basically getting sent back into a death camp. Um, and yet, we're supposed to listen to these guys? We're supposed to, oh yeah, the party of science, man, they know what they're doing. No, they actually don't. When you look at the, the rates by state, okay, because certain states like you know New York, New Jersey, um, most of the blue states, right, Democratic states, a lot of them really clamp down. I mean, still are clamped down. Total lockdown. I mean, you heard de Blasio. I mean, you can't even go to church uh, or else you, you know, you, you might get your church shut down permanently, you know, and certainly receive fines. And of course, out in California, we know that, is it Grace Community Church, I think is the name of the church, where uh, they are, um, you know, being sued and having court orders against them to stop having, uh, stop having services, uh, you know, based on what data? I mean, ba- why? Based on what? You know, maybe if one out of you know, every three people was just falling over dead, you know, maybe there's there's something else we should, we should be doing. But but <clears throat> you know, John MacArthur, very popular uh, kind of you know name in in Christian circles, John MacArthur uh, is like no, you know, he, well he and the the board of elders, you know, they're they're like no, this makes no sense. It you know versus the population of California. Now, the percentages I gave before, about 3%, that's not 3% of the population dying. That's 3% of confirmed cases. You confirmed, you got COVID, 3% of those people die, right? When it comes to the, uh, when it comes to the total population, it's way like less than, I think, I think less than a tenth of a percent. I can't remember exactly. You can go look it up, but it's way, way down. He's saying, and he's saying, wait, this doesn't make any sense. We should be able to have church. And, and no, Newsom and California is coming at him saying, uh, 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 no way, bro. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to force you to not have church. Ridiculous, ridiculous. But let's look at it. Okay. New York city. These, this is death per a hundred thousand people. Okay. So what this does by, by taking it per a hundred thousand people is it doesn't punish states that have way more population, right? Because if I said, oh my goodness, you know, South Dakota, uh, South Dakota had, you know, 100 cases and New York had 100,000 cases. I mean, you'd be like, oh my goodness, what's going on in New York? But, right, if South Dakota only has uh, 1,000 people, right, 100 cases out of 1,000 people, that would be 10%. Versus if New York has 10 million people, that's 1%, which, of course, those percentages are nice and round, and that's not the population of those states, but you see the point. So by by saying, no, we're going to take it on a per 100,000 basis, it basically levels the field. So you can really look at it and say, well, how are states doing to others compared to others? Well, New York City, their death rate per 100,000, 283. So 283 people die out of every 100,000 people. Right? They are the top. They're the very highest. The next in line is New Jersey, 180 out of 100,000 people. Next is Massachusetts with 135. Next is Connecticut with 125. Do you see a pattern here? Democratic states, a lot of them with heftier lockdowns and and, and these types of things. So my question would be, like, I, I live in Florida, and so Florida is way down on on the list, right? Florida at this point, uh, 63 deaths per 100,000 people, right? Texas, 52. Wait a minute. What well, what's going on here? I thought we need to have these extremely crazy lockdowns, right? Let's look at Illinois for instance, right? 68. 68 right? Higher than Florida, higher than Texas, higher than Georgia. Wait, 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 wait a minute, what's going on here? There's no scientific data that proves that states that did heavy, heavy lockdowns and heavy, heavy-handed tactics to, you know, stop the spread, where is the evidence that that is the way it should be and that that worked better? 
right? And yet, and yet, and this is my point, right? The party of science, y'all bunch of crazy, you know, Bible thumping Christians, you don't appreciate science. Well, based on the science, a lot of these states like Texas and Florida and different places are actually doing better. So, if anything, we would think, well, maybe we shouldn't be so heavy-handed. I mean, again, this doesn't prove one way or the other, but that's the point. It doesn't prove one way or the other. And yet, somehow, people like Newsom in California, Cuomo and de Blasio in New York, right? The, the mayor of Illinois, right? The these governors um, across the U.S., most of them, again, I'm just going to point it out. that I didn't do this. They did, right? In blue states, Democratic uh, governors and mayors, they are absolutely ruling with an iron fist, and yet there's no evidence that that even helps, that it, that even makes it better. So where is the science? We're going to shut down churches permanently with no support, no scientific evidence? So, again... I want to encourage Christians, right? We are scientific. We do like science. We love knowledge. We love it. It's awesome. It's from God. God is the one that gave us these tools to explore the universe. To He gave us reason and logic, right, which we should use. And I can't help it if there's, you know, ignorant people that, you know, also are Christians. There's ignorant people all over, right? There's <laughs> doesn't matter what your faith is or no faith. There's ignorant people. So, but I think it's, absolutely insane to to say oh we've got the party of science over here and if you're voting over there with those guys you're not you don't you hate science no actually i think the party of science and knowledge is the party who votes against murdering babies against men feeling like a woman and therefore they are a woman okay that's what i think and i'm happy to hear your thoughts and your comments as well podcast at breadbreakers.com if you'd like to chime in i hope this has helped you i hope this has given you some you know so, i don't want to say ammunition because that sounds like you're shooting at somebody right but but giving you right some some truth to be able to not feel constantly like there should be this um this pull between truth science logic reason and faith they are no they work hand in hand actually they work together and they work in a powerfully um, beautiful way to get us the knowledge and the reason and the logic, and that can then lead us to God and serving Him with all aspects of our being, right? Heart, soul, mind, and strength. So again, I love you guys. God bless you. Hope this has helped you, and we will catch you on the next episode.